Here is Azure Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack. This comes with the first two games in the series, and they are fantastic. So if you're familiar with a company called Indie Crates, or not familiar with Indie Crates, um, they used to work on a lot of Mega Man titles back in the early days, and they decided to branch off on their own and start making their own game. Their first IP that, that I know of, actually, was Gunvolt, but it might have been an earlier one as well. But uh, anyway, well, at least their, their first I own IP in America, I believe, was Gunvolt. But anyways, going to the gameplay... If you're familiar with games like Mega Man, especially Mega Man X series, this game is right up your alley. Um, seriously, um, I can't. There's just so many good things I could say about this game, and if I did go through all of them, this video would probably be like an hour long. But um, by seeing the gameplay here, you're knowing what you're getting into. Also, just to let you guys know that the sequel is coming out next year, and um, this will probably become more popular as it's a physical. So um, it's available on the Switch, 3DS and the PS4 and the spin-off game Lunas Avenger actually has a game coming out next year as well you guys should check out so anyways guys uh, Azure Striker Gunvolt series a Luminous Avenger these are fantastic games that you must own if you like action platformers Even So next up we have K's in the Wild Mass. So I had no idea this game existed until my buddy John Houston told me about it. So John, if you're watching, thanks for letting me know about this one, man. Appreciate you. So, if you're familiar with playing games like Donkey Kong Country and Klonoa, you'll kind of know what you're getting into here. From the from the get go, I felt like the, the like just the nostalgia from playing Donkey Kong Country with this one. So, like when it comes to getting the lettering and stuff like that, spelling Kaze's name out, uh, getting the, the rubies or whatever they are, jewels or something like that, um, just really felt reminiscent of that game. So. Um, you know what I'm going to say, if you like what you're seeing here, you definitely might want to check this one out. I'm having a good time with this one. Here's Clockwork Ocreo. So, this game has a lot of history behind it, and, oh man, this game is almost 30 years old, but it was just released recently, probably about a few months ago. So, so, what you are seeing here is what comes with the collector's edition of the game. You have the game itself, the art book, the soundtrack, and a bunch of art extras that come with the game. This originally was going to be an arcade game, but it was never released in arcades because the testing for it uh, didn't go well, so they ended up, like, scrapping the game, but... Uh, here's a lot of art stickers for the game. It's just really cool that this collector edition came with all this stuff. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at some gameplay for it. As you can see, this is an arcade platform adventure game, and it's actually pretty fun. But it's kind of funny, you know, though this game is beautiful in color, the sprite work and everything like that, it feels like um, that as an arcade game, this wouldn't really do well. And I can understand why, because this is something I would rather play on a console rather than an arcade. From what I heard, they had pretty good production in this game done before they kind of scrapped it. So it's kind of sad that they weren't able to finish it back in the day. But I guess better late than never. You know, it's kind of a miracle that this game was actually released. So uh, thanks to Strictly Limited for like putting this out there, man. I mean, honestly, you know, it's kind of it's nice to see like lost games get revived, and um, this is really cool to see. Tanuki Justice is an awesome arcade platform game that's just really a throwback to games like, you guys probably never never heard of this game. I know John Riggs heard of this game, of course, uh, Kid Nicky. Very reminiscent of stuff like that. So as you can see, 8-bit graphics, very arcadey. Uh, it has drop in and out co-op, which is really cool. So if you're playing the game, uh, somebody wants to play it with you, they can just uh, join you, which is really cool. Just 
really a lot of fun. And you're gonna be mashing that button pretty fast to, to try to pull off certain combos to beat enemies and stuff like that. But anyways, guys, uh, this, this is definitely one you should put on your radar, especially if you're a fan of 8-bit like arcade games, I would say. So here is Battle Princess Madeline. I had been eyeing this game for a long time, pretty much when it was actually kickstarted. Um, obviously, they reached their uh, their funding for it, and the game was created. And I wanted to wait until a physical release came out for the game. So once that came out, I, I was gold on it. Now, you guys probably saw a long time ago, if you're hardcore watchers, um, that we, me and Jason, actually did a video on this on this channel. We did a gameplay video, and. Um, I was playing the arcade mode. It was it was pretty tough for me at the time because I could barely get past the second level. I don't even think I got past the second level during that playthrough. But the real way to play this game, honestly, is through the story mode. The story mode, it seems like that's the way the developer wanted the game to be played. So it's a bit easier than the arcade mode. But still, it's nice to have like both options of the arcade mode and the story mode for difficulty. So pretty much the way the game was meant to be played and the way the game was meant to be played if it was in arcade. So definitely try out both modes. If you're thinking it's going to be as hard as uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts or, or Ghosts and Goblins, I would say it's not as hard as those games. It's a bit easier for... I would say it's 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 a bit easier than a Ghosts and Goblins game, but still, it won't hold your hand. So, uh, definitely try this one out, guys. And if anybody's already played this one, let me know what you think about it in the comments. I'm interested in hearing your opinions about it because... Um, I really enjoyed the story mode, how the game played, but playing the arcade mode, I was like, oh, man, this is getting on my nerves. But... I still could beat Super Ghouls and Ghosts pretty easy, so I don't know why I'm struggling with this game, but maybe I just gotta practice a little bit more. Next up is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon Part 2. This game is a surprising sequel that I didn't know was going to come out and it's finally out as a physical. I'm sure by now these games don't really need an introduction, but if you haven't played this series or heard of it, it is pretty much like a spiritual successor to the Castlevania series. And uh, This one um, pretty much is, is a throwback of the old school 8-bit games. But really well done. Um, you can switch between characters that you rescue during the game or you can leave them behind. Kind of like reminiscent of Castlevania 3. But thankfully not as hard as Castlevania 3. Now the standard version of this game will be available at Best Buy uh, pretty soon. They don't have a re release date yet. But I implore people if you want to pick this game up. If you don't want to get a digital copy. Go get your copy at Best Buy. Here's Curse Castilla. Uh, I talked about this game over the years. Uh, for I think I talked about it when it came out on Vita and the PS4. This is a really fun game. Very similar to Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Ghosts and Goblins, stuff like that. Uh, man, but still to this day, I have not got the best ending for this game. I, I got one of the. I didn't get the worst ending, but I still got the bad ending, which I believe, if I remember, it's like if you die too much in the game, uh, you can't get to a certain point. So that was uh, kind of annoying. Um, but. Still, um, no, actually, actually, I got to the last boss, but yeah, I died too much, so uh, something happened, I can't remember, it was it was messed up, so after playing this game, you want the best ending possible, so make sure you get good at this one, it's a lot of fun, uh, definitely um, check it out. Alright, so here is Gal Gunvolt Burst and Mighty Gunvolt Burst. Uh, these are considered like Mega Man type games, they're pretty cool. If you guys seen me, you've seen like uh, some of the... Um, 
uh, Gunvolt games I played on the, on the channel in the past. Uh, these are 8-bit versions of those games, and they're, they're pretty fun. Um, this game comes with all the DLC characters on the disc, which is really nice. So you can switch between characters, and they all have their own little mini story or whatnot, if you care about it or not. But at the end of each level, you fight a boss, and the bosses are kind of like gimmicky and everything like that. They're actually pretty fun to figure out their patterns and everything like that. But throughout the missions, you'll collect like candy and food type items, and then that'll help heal you in case you need it later in the game. I actually use a lot of it during the bosses, but um, a really cool game. I love the indie crates decided to make these games because they they just really do a good job. You can see that they have a lot of fun making these, and it just like man, it just it just takes me back to the old eight bit days of like if something like this was able to come out on the Nintendo, which it would not have been, but still, it shows that the spirit is still there. That a lot of people love these type of games. Here's Gan Ryu Part 2. Now, the original game came out uh, on SNK Arcades, and uh, then it got ported to the AES system, and it says in 2016. So this is a um, ha action hack and slash game, similar to games like uh, Legend of Kage, um, Strider, maybe even Shinobi. So um, as you guys can see, it's a colorful looking game. Looks pretty awesome. Cag swears this is like the best game since sliced bread, so I'm going to take his word for it. But I heard the game was pretty tough on its uh, release, but they patched some things out of it, uh, or they fixed some things, and uh, it plays a lot better from what I'm told. So definitely looking forward to playing this one. I love the arcade look of it. And when I say arcade look, I mean the 2D look of it. I love the sprite work that they put into this game. So definitely something I'm looking forward to playing. Next up is Azure Striker Gunvolt 3 for the PlayStation 3. Now, you guys know I talked about this game before as well. Uh, I had the Switch version, but I wanted it on PS4, and as far as I know, this is going to be the only physical release uh, for it. I don't think any American company is going to make a physical release for it, but um, if you guys haven't played this series by now, you guys are really missing out. Now, remember when I did my video before about it, um, the, the ratio wasn't right correct on it, so um, it was all squished. The image was pretty much squished, but now I'm playing the game at 1080p. You guys are seeing that quality. The game is 60 frames per second. It's... A lot of fun. Uh, if you like games like Mega Man uh, or Mega Man Zero, you know, Mega Man ZX, you'll definitely want to play this game. It is on point. Great boss battle, great level design. Just overall, a lot of fun. Looking back on this game's origins, you know, it's crazy to think this series pretty much started on the 3DS as digital download, and now look how far it's come. You know, uh, definitely support this game, guys. Well, hopefully, we'll keep getting more games like this because this, this game is a tribute to the old school platformer, I would say. Prudent, aren't you? Now for my specialty! Waltz of Twin Elements! Enjoy, Striker. Cautioning your partner while heeding your enemy. You could learn a thing or two from him, little kitten. <laughs> we got this, kitty. No matter what attempts is trying to do, as long as we stay together, we can stop them. Let's go! Hitting 90 second run. Divine Ruin Heresy! Uh... How magnificent! That's it for tonight! Here's Wallachia, Reign of Dracula for the PlayStation 4 system. I got this from a company called Pixel Heart, and pretty much this game is really feels like a throwback to the old school Castlevania games. Not the Metroidvania ones, but the more level-based ones. 
I would say this game is more of a run and gun type because of the your main weapon is a bow and arrow, which you get upgrades with. You also have a side weapon, which is a sword. I feel like this game more focuses on like range combat, but if you're good enough, you can use a sword to deflect attacks and get close to enemies, of course, or just use it as a, a last resort. Uh, but depending on how skilled you are, uh, that's going to be how effective that weapon is for you. You can tell that the people that created this game are big fans of the Castlevania series. It has an awesome soundtrack, and each level has a cool boss fight. It has little story tidbits, too, that kind of like help the story along as well. So definitely, if you're a Castlevania fan, definitely pick this one up. Here's Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avenger 9 Part 2. <laughs> That's a crazy title. But uh, this is very similar to Azure Striker Gunvolt Part 3 in any of the Gunvolt games. Uh, you play as Copen, and pretty much a little bit of the story, you get transferred to another world, you find some other beings, they're pretty hostile, you're trying to find your way back home. I felt like the uh, workers in this game, those are the enemy types that you fight, uh, are, were pretty awesome. I think, I think they were very well done. My favorite out of the bunch that you fight is Brigade. I think Brigade is pretty awesome, especially if you fight them on hard mode. Uh, definitely a worthy boss battle. Um, but all of them are really good. Man, this is another action-packed game I think a lot of people will like. Uh, I was thinking about doing a review on this game, but I figured, you know what, it's just, uh, there's plenty of good reviews out there. Uh, I mean, you guys are seeing it here now, so I'll just talk about it briefly here. But I think this is my favorite Gumball game right now in the series. Uh, that's probably, people are looking at me following like I'm crazy, but man, I think this is the best one so far. So, um, yeah, you guys let me know what you think about that. But uh, definitely, I would say pick this one up if you have the chance. It's a lot of fun. Um, the music is great. Uh, the battles are just epic to me. Um, I feel like it's just like, it's just it's just a throwback to the games I like. You know, like, I don't know if you guys know this, or maybe you should know this already, but I'm a big Mega Man fan, and I love the Mega Man X series. I love the ZX series, even the Zero, Zero series as well. So um, definitely uh, try this game out if you get a chance. Ballistic Shield! You better be ready! On guard! Bringing it back! Ah! Go! Fire! 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 Forward march! I will hold the line! This is it for you! I will race you! Let's go, Vespa! Yes, brother! Connection! Complete! Secret yeah! onslaught! This is our true power! And last up, we have Panzer Palatin. So this game was a total surprise to me. And I actually briefly talked about this game before in a pickups video. Like, I had barely played it. But man, this game is a lot of fun. And what's going to attract a lot of people to it is the graphical style. It's reminiscent to, of course, 8-bit games. But also the cool gimmick in this game is that not only are you in a, this cool robot that attacks things, but you can actually get out of the robot and do certain attacks too to get con like across certain platforms and stuff like that. So definitely an interesting game. Uh, I felt like it should be on this list, and I think a lot of people will enjoy it. <laughs> 